SpaceX is now preparing for Starship Flight 12, and this mission is expected to be one of the most important tests in the program so far. Flight 12 is expected to be the first full launch of Starship's new Block 3 design. When we talk about blocks in the Starship program, SpaceX is using the term to separate major design generations, not minor upgrades. The earliest integrated flights like Flight 1 used what is now considered Block 1 hardware. These vehicles were built to prove that Starship could launch as a full system, survive Max-Q, and separate stages. Block 1 ships and boosters were experimental and incomplete. They suffered from engine failures, fires in the engine bay, tile loss, and unstable stage separation. Several of these flights ended early, but they provided the data SpaceX needed to understand what had to change. Block 2 began appearing in later flights and became fully established by flights 9, 10, and 11. These vehicles introduced a reinforced hot staging system and a more mature heat shield layout. Block 2 starships were the first to complete full ascent, controlled in spaceflight, and survive most of re-entry heating. Flight 11, in particular, showed that a Block 2 ship could perform a controlled landing flip and splash down intact. Block 3 is the next step, and Flight 12 is expected to be its first full launch. Block 3 is focused on reliability and reuse, rather than basic flight survival. The most visible change is the move to Raptor 3 engines, which are designed to be simpler and more durable. Every Starship flight so far, from Flight 1 through Flight 11, has used Raptor 2 engines. Raptor 2 itself is already one of the most advanced rocket engines ever flown. It is a full-flow staged combustion methane engine, operating at extremely high chamber pressures far beyond what most engines in service today can handle. Raptor 2 produces around 230 tons of thrust at sea level, making it more powerful than nearly every other operational rocket engine while also being designed for reuse. Compared to engines like the Merlin, Blue Origin's BE-4, or even RD-180 engines, Raptor 2 sits at the very top of the performance spectrum. However, Raptor 2 was still a compromise engine. It was developed quickly to get Starship flying. During early flights, SpaceX encountered fires, leaks, and engine shutdowns caused by this complexity. Raptor 3 is SpaceX's answer to those problems. Raptor 3 is expected to produce around 280 metric tons of thrust at sea level. That is an increase of about 50 tons of thrust per engine compared to Raptor 2. That is more than a 20% increase in power from a single engine. Raptor 3 also operates at even higher pressure, with figures often cited around 350 bar. Despite this increase in pressure and thrust, the engine is expected to be lighter than Raptor 2. This means better performance and a higher thrust-to-weight ratio at the same time. The most important change, however, is not the raw numbers. Raptor 3 is designed to remove complexity. Many external pipes and exposed components have been eliminated or integrated into the engine body. All of these engine improvements matter for one simple reason. No matter how advanced a rocket looks on paper, it is only as good as the engines pushing it off the ground. A powerful rocket with unreliable engines will never be safe, reusable, or consistent. If the engines struggle, the entire vehicle struggles. That is why the move to Raptor 3 completely changes what a Block 3 Starship launch can look like. Block 3 Starship is designed around Raptor 3 from the start. The first Block 3 flight is expected to be Ship 39, with Booster 19. These vehicles are being tested more carefully than earlier Starships. The last major test, Flight 11, launched in October 2025 using Booster 15 and Ship 38. That flight successfully completed its planned ascent, stage separation, in-space tests and re-entry, ending with a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean. With Flight 11, SpaceX closed out the Block 2 era and shifted its attention to the next generation of hardware. For Flight 12, the main vehicle expected to fly is Ship 39. This ship is considered the first true Block 3 Starship intended for flight. On the booster side, SpaceX is expected to use Booster 19 after earlier plans involving Booster 18 were abandoned due to damage sustained during testing. With Ship 39 and Booster 19, SpaceX is assembling the first full Block 3 stack. 
Ship 39 also includes clear upgrades to the heat shield and the way the tiles are attached to the vehicle. Earlier, Starship flights showed just how extreme re-entry conditions are for a vehicle this large. During atmospheric re-entry, Starship experiences temperatures of up to 1,400 degrees Celsius on the windward side of the vehicle. That heat lasts for several minutes while the ship is traveling at hypersonic speed. On earlier flights, many heat shield tiles survived the heat itself, but the real problem was durability. Tiles that stay attached for one flight still need to survive multiple re-entries, repeated heating and cooling cycles, and strong vibrations. If tiles crack, loosen, or fall off after just one mission, the vehicle cannot be reused in a practical way. Block 3 ships focus on stronger tile attachment methods, tighter tolerances between tiles, and better consistency across the heat shield to reduce weak points. Ship 39 is also going through more careful testing before it ever reaches the launch pad. A major reason it has not rushed into visible testing at Starbase is because much of its most important validation work happens at the Massey test site. At this location, SpaceX uses a thrust simulator stand to perform cryogenic proof testing on the ship. During these tests, Ship 39's propellant tanks are filled with liquid oxygen at about minus 183 degrees Celsius and liquid methane at about minus 162 degrees Celsius. These temperatures cause the stainless steel structure to shrink and contract, which places stress on welds, joints, and internal plumbing. At the same time, the thrust simulator applies mechanical loads similar to what the ship would experience when its engines are producing millions of kilograms of thrust during launch. In simple terms, SpaceX is freezing the ship and squeezing it at the same time. These tests push the tanks beyond normal flight conditions to confirm that the structure can safely handle both extreme cold and extreme force. Engineers closely monitor pressure levels, deformation, and strain to make sure the tanks maintain their shape and strength without cracking or leaking. Only after Ship 39 passes these cryogenic and load tests will it return to Starbase for engine installation and static fire testing. Static fires involve igniting the engines while the vehicle is fully fueled and held down on the pad, producing real thrust for several seconds. By completing cryogenic proof testing first, SpaceX reduces the risk of discovering serious structural or plumbing problems during these high-stress engine tests. At the same time that Ship 39 and Booster 19 are being prepared, Starbase itself is being rebuilt for Block 3 operations. Flight 12 is expected to launch from Starbase's second orbital launch pad, not the original pad used for earlier flights. This change is happening because the original pad was not designed to handle repeated launches of a rocket producing more than 70 million newtons of thrust at liftoff. During earlier flights, the exhaust from 33 Raptor engines caused severe damage to the launch mount, concrete foundation, and surrounding ground hardware. Instead of continuing to repair the same structure, SpaceX removed large portions of the original pad, including steel supports, ground plumbing, and flame management hardware. This cleared space for a redesigned ground system built specifically to support frequent launches. The new launch pad is designed to tolerate higher loads and shorter turnaround times. One major upgrade is the propellant delivery system. Each Starship launch requires roughly 3,400 metric tons of liquid oxygen and liquid methane. The new plumbing layout allows faster propellant loading and improved thermal stability so that multiple vehicles can be fueled within short time windows. At liftoff, the full stack will accelerate through maximum aerodynamic pressure about 60 to 70 seconds after launch. Stage separation will use hot staging, where the ship's engines ignite before the booster fully separates. This method reduces mechanical stress and has already been proven on earlier flights. After separation, the booster will perform a boost back burn, followed by descent burns, and then splash down in the gulf. A catch attempt is not expected on this flight. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.